Hey, it's your open source advocate and I am back with another video. I wanted to cover a topic that I've dug around for for years and years and years. I just haven't found something until recently that I really liked, but in, in my regular job, in my just hobby life and everything else, I take lots of notes and I've been looking for a really good note taking application. So I'll put it out there. I've used OneNote in the past. It's fine. It's interesting. It's a little bit confusing the way they lay it out to me, honestly. Um, I've used Evernote. It was perfectly fine too. I've used Apple Notes. I've used Simple Note. I've just I've used so many different note taking applications. I couldn't go through them all, or this would definitely be in a one hour video. So I'm going to try to keep this one short and to the point. So so when looking for notes applications, I've tried tons and tons and tons, and there's plenty of them out there that are really great. Um, the ones that I've found that seemed like they would be a great open source option turned out to be kind of an online only thing so you had to have a connection to get your notes and you had to have a connection to change your notes and you had to have a connection to take any notes and sometimes you just don't have a connection maybe you're on a plane and you just want to make some notes to remind you of something later but you definitely want that to sync up with a server somewhere so that you can share it and I know there's lots of alternative things out there you know you could use uh, Dropbox or Nextcloud basically to, to save your files in and then it syncs later and then you can open that in a different device once it syncs and, and that's kind of what uh, this note taking application does but it does it kind of in a built-in way it's not really me just making a text file in a folder somewhere and, and having it sync so I'm pretty happy with it I've been real happy with it it is cross-platform it is open source of course 100 percent and it's called Joplin Notes that's J-O-P-L-I-N and it's right up here. It's icon. I don't know if I can get it on the screen. I probably can't. But it's just a J, you know, a blue square with a J. Pretty standard icon for an application these days. Um, it's actually super easy to get and install. So it, it's an app image. And I'll actually just switch over to the browser here and open it up. So, so here's their page. And it's pretty nice. So you can see, first of all, you get your tablet devices, your phone devices, your laptop devices. They have apps for iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is awesome. So if you come to their page, you'll see it's a pretty simple looking page. It does tell you a little bit about the project and about them, which is great. Down here, you can actually get the installers for the different desktop applications. And then they'll take you to the Google Play Store or the App Store to get the apps for your uh, other devices, which is great. So once you've got it, you can you can install it pretty easily. And this one for, for Linux, it's an app image. So if you haven't done an app image before, it's pretty simple to use. You download the app image, and, and in fact, I'll, I'll just show you. So once you click on the actual downloader, you'll see down here in the bottom left, it's downloading, downloading the app image. Um, once you get that downloaded, you can just go into your documents folders and then go to your downloads and or wherever you download files so here you're gonna see that I have two copies of it uh, one slightly newer than the other that that's our indicator that we've got the right one so if I right click on this old one and I hit properties and I go to permissions you'll see that it's already set as executable if I right click on the new one that I just downloaded and go to properties and then permissions you'll see that it's not executable. So that's the one thing you have to do. So once it's downloaded, you open this up, you right click, do properties, go to permissions, and just check that box. Once you've checked that box, you can just start the application. When you double click this, it'll ask you, do you want to create a desktop icon and a menu icon? It'll do a few things for you when you do it. Um, I do leave the app image here because I think it runs something out of the app images. So you'll see I have a few of them here. Um, so you could move this first and then do the install just so you have it in a place that you prefer. But I do leave them installed once once I get them and, and actually get it going. I, I'll leave the app image here just because I've deleted them in the past and then the app stopped working. So it must be referring to something here when it gets installed. Um, and anyways, everything's contained within that folder. So once you've done that, you're done. You're installed. It, it'll run. And that's really it. That's, that's the hardest part of it, honestly, is to, to get it downloaded and installed. So you click the button, you go open up the app image, and you're done. So once you get into Joplin Notes, it's laid out very simply. It's not anything difficult or hard to use. It has a very simple uh, interface. It has buttons to help you if you don't know Markdown, but it does use Markdown, and so you can see it kind of in a side-by-side -side view. 
and then you can toggle through those views so if I don't like this I could just turn off the the reading view I guess you'd call it or I can switch it to the reading view if I just want to read what's on the notes and then of course I can turn it back to side by side so I'm just clicking this layout button and it just toggles through those you can create a new notebook so that ends up over here on the left you can add tags for your notes to help you find things a little bit easier um, the search is actually really good you just start typing and it'll search and it'll find things so if I put in something like I don't know, wire guard. You'll see it comes up with all of the different notes that I've made that have wire guard in it, and it highlights some things so that I can see where it found the actual information that I'm looking for. So that's pretty fast. That's pretty fast. Um, wasn't bad. Found everything I was looking for, which is awesome. If we go back to the top, so what I've done here is I've actually created like a to-do type note, so something that I need to finish. So you can see I've got it started, and I'm using Markdown. So if I keep coming down, I can actually create checklist items inside of this note. And you just do that by checking on the box and it gives you kind of the format that you would use to do that. And this would be item one. And then item, you know, to go to the grocery store, check mailbox, I mean, whatever you need, right? You can just keep going and take take care of things as you go through the day. You can actually just check them over here in this view and you see it changes over here. And then the same way, if you prefer to do it through Markdown, you can just put an X and it checks it on the other side. So it it's bi-directional as far as that kind of thing goes. And you can add things to these notes. So once I'm done, I can just check that note and mark it as complete and you see it drops down in the list and the other note drops back or the other list of things that I have to do comes back up to the top so it kinda of floats those things to the top for what's finished or not finished the newest notes always pop up to the top except for these notes that, that we're just creating here so as you create notebooks inside the notebooks you can create multiple notes which is very similar to OneNote so you can kind of categorize your notes and keep things kind of simple and lined up and you can see I've got several different notes here and then right back to the note list that I want so I can categorize my notes to make it easier to filter through and find they have the search that makes it really fast and easy to find so that's great now I've got notes locally I can do notes locally that's one of the first things that I wanted the next thing is syncing so there's dark mode and light mode by the way it's not just dark mode but the next thing is syncing so down here you can see that there's this little button that says sync and it's actually spinning right now to try to sync some things up. If we go into our tools and our general options, there's a few things here that you can see that we've got. So first of all, you can set your language, your date time formats. And then as you move down, you see the synchronization section. So here you can actually choose different options for how you want to sync these notes. So I have Nextcloud set up, which is fine by me. Um, that's what I want to use that makes it really easy for me and it's my thing I'm hosting it it's my data if you're not as particular as me about that that's okay they do have they have options for OneDrive for OneDrive Dev for WebDAV for Nextcloud and for Dropbox so if you have any of those things set up you can go and set up the synchronization through those things. So a lot, I mean, almost everybody has a Dropbox account. If you don't use it much or it's not full or you pay for a really big account and you've got space, then that's a great place to put these notes and have them sync. I use Nextcloud. When you have Nextcloud, you have to go find your web dev. So I want to kind of talk about that. So I'm logged into my Nextcloud back here. And you see I've got these different apps across the top. And, and if you have Nextcloud, you'll have something similar. If you haven't installed other apps, you may not see quite as much stuff here. You may see different things here. It just depends. But one thing you should have is this little folder right here. If you click on this folder here, it takes you to your Nextcloud um, folder area. So everything that's folders and files that are getting synced through Nextcloud is, is where you're going to be brought to. Here you can see these are the notes. So they get a hash basically that tells it which note is which. It keeps them over time and then you can tell it to only keep you know the history for the last so many days. I think 90 is the default so it does keep a history of changes and things that you've made. So if you mess something up you could go back and actually get that history of notes. But once you're on this folder, um, down here at the bottom there's this little settings section. And if you click on that, it exposes that web dev URL that you need. So you can copy that from here, come back into your Joplin Notes application, and paste it in. So now you've got the web dev URL that you need. Then you have to put in your credentials in order to log into your Nextcloud. 
and then down here you can just test that and see if it syncs up properly and if it gives you the success message you're done don't forget to save so you want to apply maybe hit OK make sure you save your changes and then there are some other things that you can set down here in the configuration um, so the appearance like I said there's dark mode and then there's light mode and then they have solarized dark solarized light so again you see these enable now because I did that so I can say apply Ooh, that's really bright so I can say, wow, that's too bright. Let me just go back to dark mode and apply. And we're back to dark mode. So you can set up a few things about your notes here. And then there's plugins that you can also set up and, and use. Um, feel free to check the ones that you want, figure out what they're doing. As far as the application goes, you can say, show the tray icon. Whenever I close it, just go to the tray or actually close the application which is kind of a nice feature. Sometimes you want your notes open, but you don't want them right in the middle of everything, maybe not in your dock or, or, th or on your desktop, but you do want them open kind of somewhere where you can access them. And then your note history, we talked about this a while ago, so it does keep a note history and you can set for how long it should keep that history. I just left it as the default. So you do have a few general options that you can set there, which is great. Once you're done, you just hit the back button and you come back to your notes and you can kind of see the different notes that you've been working on. So this is a really cool thing because now it syncs. So I go install it on another machine and I set up the syncing on the same web dev and then I just come down here and tell it to sync and it will sync up those two systems. So if I make changes here, they show up on the other machine and vice versa. The other great part is that it comes to my phone and I want to do I do want to show it on, on the phone. Um, so I'll get some video using my phone and mirroring it to a Mac. Um, I am an iOS user, but being able to have those changes show up whenever I do things on my phone is really great. Alright, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Joplin application for iOS. I don't have an Android device, but they do have an Android application as well. So down here in the bottom right, you'll see the J, that's the Joplin application icon. You just touch it and you jump right into the Joplin user interface. So here you see I've got dark mode. You can set this within the app itself. It does not yet conform to the iOS setting if you have dark mode or light mode if you're running the newest version of iOS. But you can see here I've got my list of uh, notes uh, or notes uh, that I've created previously in this notebook and at the top you can see the actual notebook itself. If you hit the menu on the left you can change notebooks pretty easily. Just jump back and forth and then of course you can go into a specific note and you can see the note items. Now the one thing for me, I have uh, not great vision, so I do use things with larger text. But here on the screen, you can see that once you get into the note, in the reader view, the, the note text is pretty small. So that, that's not great for me. I'd like for them to kind of improve that where it actually adjusts the font size um, along with everything else on the, on the note view. But you can see our, our checklist that we made earlier in the, in the preview. And it's checked, so I can just uncheck it by touching on it and it goes away and that will sync up of course with the other devices and the way you set up that syncing is when you go back into your menu down here at the bottom you'll see configuration and when you go into configuration you've got a few things that you can do there so you've got general which gives you language time date and then here's synchronization so again you just pick next cloud put in your dav URL your username and your password um, if you're using Dropbox, same concept, just a different way of syncing, and of course, same thing for one, uh, OneDrive. So as you continue down, there are some other settings that you can set. So you can set the max concurrent uh, connections, you can set uh, <clears throat> how long it is between synchronization. So on the desktop, I don't synchronize quite as often as I do on the phone, just because I know I'm going to be in here, I'm going to do some notes, and it's going to be pretty quick most of the time, and then I want them to go ahead and sync before I get out of the app. And I'm always a little worried about apps being able to do things in the background, particularly syncing functions. So I do set it a little bit shorter for that purpose. Uh, if we go back and we actually go back into our notes here, um, you'll see that I've got a lot of different notes. And of course, we can go back into our note. And then down on the bottom right is a little uh, floating action button there with the edit symbol. So you can go in and actually start editing your note. And we can just add another note. So this one doesn't really give you the pre-populated text, but it is not hard to do and then when you hit the space it jumps back but there we go I think we actually need a space between there and there we go and then we come back to the end of it and we say new note item and then we can just save that 
and there's our new note item on our list and of course we can check it as it's done or uncheck it if it's not done and then we can go back here and we can go into other notes so I'm <clears throat> really interested in Christmas lights and some DIY stuff that I've seen recently so I'm thinking about using that as one of the things that I do for a future project and talking about some open source ways to do those things but that's a really big topic I'm learning as I dig in more and more so that'll probably be sometime next year before I get into that um, but here's a lot of links and things that I've found on YouTube about people already doing this and places where I can do some research to understand better what's going on I'm just taking a lot of digging so I've got a lot of different things that I keep notes on and I really kind of uh, really like this app I love that it syncs I love that it syncs with um, everything on the desktop and that it's cross-platform which is super amazing and that it's open source completely and I'm running and hosting everything is even more important to me so that's iOS so this gives me a lot of freedom I can use this on my laptop I can take it with me if I'm on the airplane and I'm able to connect to anything I can still take my notes I can modify my notes I can read through my notes I can use my notes for whatever it is I'm trying to accomplish and anything that I change once I get back onto a connection is going to sync up within a few minutes and I've got everything where I want it so this is a really great tool. I've really enjoyed using it. I'm really happy with the, the process, product. Uh, <laughs> very happy with the product, and I'm happy with the progress that they're making. So as you saw when I downloaded, the, there is a new version since I downloaded it last time. So there's active development going on on this product as well, which makes it really useful. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I hope it's useful for you. If you have suggestions, let me know. And I want to make things better and hope that I'm giving you great content. Thanks very much. And if you like this, like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.